in continuation with the diabetic kidney disease we we'll see about the what are the biopsy finding in diabetic kidney disease in diabetic kidney disease there is a about 50 percent increase in the kidney volume till the final stages where the glomerulosclerosis sets in and overall there is a shrinkage of the kidney there is a globular hypertrophy vascular hypertrophy interstitial hypertrophy which usually occurs this is more described in type 1 diabetic patient the changes the changes of the biopsy finding we will see under the following subheading in the glomerular tubular interstitial and the vascular changes first in the glomeruli we see about the glomerular basement thickening this is the first change which we encounter in the diabetic kidney disease which usually occurs after two to three years of onset of the diabetes and this is the first and the important electron microscopy finding and remember this value as 310 nanometer which is the normal glomerular basement membrane thickness and the range is from 270 to 350 and in diabetic kidney disease more than three times of the glomerular basement thick basement membrane thickening is more common and one more important point about this glomerular basement membrane thickening is it correlates with the DKD progression and the urine albumin creatinine albumin excretion ratio. This is about the glomerular basement membrane thickening. Next important finding is the mesangial matrix expansion. This is the first and important finding which we observe in the light microscopy. Mesangial matrix is more expanded, cellularity may reduce, and this expansion can be described under nodular glomerular sclerosis or the diffuse glomerular sclerosis nodular glomerular sclerosis usually this pathological finding occurs in the kidney after 10 to 15 years of type 1 diabetes and it is described and it can present in up to 50 percentage of the patients from diabetes and it has no functional correlation even though this nodular glomerular sclerosis has been a important finding in diabetic kidney disease it has no functional correlation it is also called the Kimmelstein insulation because this was described by the two scientists in 1936 so that is why it is also called the Kimmelstein Wilson lesion these are nothing but the intercapillary glomerulosclerosis if we take the glomeruli this usually occurs in the the glomeruli contains the lobules central part of the peripheral lobule the glow uh, these nodules are usually located these are fast positive more eosinophilic which contain pycnotic nuclei and sometimes it if the expansion occurs it might cause decrease in the surface area which is available for filtration formation of micro aneurysms in the capillaries these are all the important points about the nodular glomerular sclerosis or the chemistrain insulation and it might be sometimes around, uh, surrounded by the foam cells and the size varies from small to the larger size that we will see in the subsequent images and the important differential diagnosis for this nodular glomerular sclerosis or ablidosis light chain deposition disease and the MPGN these are all the important biopsy differential diagnosis next is about diffuse glomerular sclerosis this is present in up to 90 percentage of the patient of diabetic kidney disease and it is the important finding about this it has a functional correlation if it is progressing there is a more chance of the kidney function also deteriorates that is the important point about this diffuse glomerular sclerosis and this is more characteristic for diabetic kidney disease and regarding the photocyte injury photocyte injury is also common this is the earliest change there will be photocyte uh, food process effacement man can also occur and uh, even before the albuminuria stage begin this patho pathology begins in and why these changes occur that we will see in the pathogenesis part of the diabetic kidney disease and uh, one more important point is about there is an increase in nephrin excretion even before the onset of albuminuria that indicates the photocyte injury sometimes this also result in secondary fsgs with respect to the bowman capsule the important point is that there is accumulation of hyaline material below the parietal epithelial cells of the Bowman's capsule which is called the capsular drop. So these are all the important finding in the glomeruli. In the tubular interstitial part in the proximal converted tubule there might be accumulation of the glycogen which is fast positive material within the proximal converted tubule cells which is called the Armani Epstein's lesion. 
and there will be eventual uh, formation of the tubular interstitial fibrosis and regarding the vascular part there is a hyaline accumulation in the subendothelial part of the both afferent and efferent arteriole this is the specific finding for diabetic kidney disease and if the in the subendothelial part the hyaline accumulation is called the fibrin cap on the hyaline cap the fibrin cap is a misnomer it is not the fibrin it's the hyaline accumulation and as we see here this usually occurs after three to five years so the characteristic finding is this one the first finding is the globular basement membrane thickening the most specific finding for diabetic nephropathy is the afferent and efferent arterial hyaline accumulation so these are all the biopsy finding this finding we will see in the histopathological images also is there any difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes with respect to the biopsy finding what are the characteristic duration which has been described or all for type 1 diabetes in type 2 diabetes these findings are heterogeneous as well as based on biopsy finding we can't differentiate between type 1 or type 2 diabetes the only important finding is type 2 diabetes pathological finding are usually heterogeneous So this is the schematic diagram of the normal glomeruli. The important pathological finding with respect to the diabetic kidney disease, as I described, first is the glomerular basement membrane thickening, mesangial matrix expansion, resulting in the nodular glomerular sclerosis or the uh, diffuse glomerular sclerosis. There's a photocyte injury, photocyte effacement, subendothelial accumulation will be there, which is called the hyaline or the fibrin cap. In the afferent and efferent arteriole, there is a hyaline accumulation, and in the PCT, the accumulation is called the Armani Epstein lesion. So, we will see the histopathological images. So, this is the image of the normal globulite to show the mesangial matrix and the mesangial cell. These are the lobules, as we see. Usually, the Timmelstein Wilson lesions are the central part of the peripheral glomerular lobule, has been described. So, just See this, this is the normal glomerular finding. Here, as we see, there is a mild matrix mesangial expansion. So, here, mesangial matrix expansion has been progressed, result in formation of the yearly nodules. This is the past time. So now the nodules is clear, they are just present in the central part of the lobules. These are all the Timmerstein Wilson nodule. In the past in the glomeruli. This is the advanced histopathology image of a past in which is showing advanced glomerular sclerosis. This is the microaneurysm which is being shown. With respect to the tubular interstitium also, in the tubular interstitium also, there will be a thickening of the tubular basement membrane, resulting in wrinkling and hyaline accumulation. These are all the important findings in tubular interstitium. And the respective images are, as we see here, this is the normal tubular interstitial cortex biopsy showing the tubular epithelial cell in the tubular basement membrane. As we see here, there is a tubular basement membrane thickening and the wrinkling of the tubules, which is characteristically seen in di not only diabetes it is seen in diabetic kidney disease also and this image shows the hyaline accumulation within the vessels another image showing the tubular basement membrane thickening hyaline accumulation and the wrinkling of the tubules in diabetic kidney disease So in 2007, there was a classification system by the Renal Pathological Society where they introduced an international standardized scoring for diabetic kidney disease which takes into account the glomeruli, interstitium and the vascular changes. They have given the scoring. What is the importance of that scoring? The importance is it helps in the prognosis of diabetic kidney disease to predict the prognosis. So first is the, this is the table showing the classification of the glomeruli. First focus over here, there are three classes, class 1, class 2, class 3 and class 4. Chemistry Wilson lesion comes under class 3. 
so class one just focus over here class one is the mind or non-specific like the microscopic changes there is only gbm thickening there is no other finding gbm cutoff they have mentioned as i told the normal gbm thickness is 310 you remember as 270 to 350 so more than 390 or more than 430 in males and females if there is increase in the thickness this comes under the class one class two is nothing but mesangial matrix expansion if it is mild 2a if it is severe 2b 3 is Himmelstein Wilson course advanced here they describe as less than 50 percentage of glomerular sclerosis more than 50 percentage of glomerular sclerosis and what is the explanation for this mild and severe mesangial expansion here they are mentioned see mild is if the mesangial expansion occupies an area smaller than the area of the capillary lumen then it is mild if it is more than the capillary lumen then it is severe So this is regarding the classification of the glomerular class 1, 2, 3 and 4. The prognosis significance is 3 and 4 high chances of progression to ESRD. So basically this classification helps for the prognostic value of the diabetic kidney disease. This is the continuation for the interst interstitial scoring, vascular scoring. If the based on the presence of Interesting if there is interstitial fibrosis and tubular atrophy based on the presence of how much if the it is classified scores of 0, 1, 2, 3 has been given with respect to the interstitial inflammation, vascular lesion, and hyalinosis. The scores have been allotted. Basically, the scores are higher the score, more is the chances of prognosis, and if the is the one which correlates more with the renal functional loss, that is more chance of progression to ESRD. What are the demerits are drawbacks of this classification is it doesn't include the other important findings like capsular drop endocapillary uh, findings and there are few pathological findings which have not been included in this grading that is the drawback coming to other important finding is based on the electron microscopy there are other parameters from which we can correlate the functional correlation between the biopsy finding and the functional uh, significance in diabetic kidney disease these parameters are the dyv these are the uh, morphometric abbreviation basically the electron microscopy finding mesangial and the globular volume there is a fraction of volume of the globulus occupied by the mesangium and similarly there are other parameters like fraction of volume of the globulus occupied by mesangial matrix fraction of volume of renal cortex occupied by interstitium basically these uh, calculations are being done to know the effective surface area effective filtration area available so that the kidney functional outcome can be uh, prognosticated so these are all the parameters which are being seen and this is the electron microscopy finding this side is a normal kidney here we see there is a mesangial matrix expansion basically i kept this image to show the globular basement membrane thickening and the photocyte coat process loss which is seen over here so what is this one this is again the first time to show the yearly mesangial matrix expansion the mesangium gets expanded over here and what is this this is the woman's capsule there's a higher end material accumulation this is nothing but the capsular drop which is the finding in diabetic nephropathy and this image to show the hyaline accumulation in the afferent and efferent artery or important finding that is specific for diabetic nephropathy so what about immunofluorescence so far we have described about light microscopy and electron microscopy not about immunofluorescence in, in immunofluorescence there might be non-specific igg trapping might be there here we are showing the tubular basement membrane non-specific igg trapping again another biopsy sample uh, electron microscope image to show the GBM thickening in diabetic kidney disease. So in the seminar there was a question how this GBM thickening is measured. Sorry, GBM thickness being measured. It is basically electron microscopy method. So digitalized uh, method where the biopsy sample is being analyzed and the thickness is being 
calculated by the software it varies from the method is being varied from uh, lab to lab depends on the pathologist which method they are using so another image to show the global placement membrane thickening normal as i told it is 310 nanometer here it is around four times thickened so now we'll be focusing on the hemochain wheels and nodules again this is past time showing mesangial matrix expansion these are all the we take this as a lobule central part of the peripheral lobule the mesangial expansion started mesangial expansion is a zone that remains silver stain now coming to the nodules these are all the kw nodules the size varies from smaller to larger size again the nodule this much bigger size this is of mesial trichome strain this is how the nodules appear see there is another big nodule again in tumor stain will send nodule this images i kept to show one to show the size of the nodules which varies from very small to the bigger and these are mesangial matrix expansion hyaline accumulation and methanum in silver stain to show the nodules again this much big almost half of the glomeruli being occupied nodule same past time multiple nodules the entire glomeruli almost replaced with the chemistry and the nodules mesangial lysis is nothing but disintegration of the mesangium during mesangial matrix expansion this mesangial lysis occur which appear like this in jones methanum in silver stain basically the mesangium gets disintegrated the cells loss this might to certain formation of the microneurism another image to show the capsule drop again capsule drop along with the nodule over here this mesangial hypercellularity arterial hyalinosis along with the mesangial expansion and diabetic kidney disease tubular basement membrane non specific igg tracking so this is all about biopsy finding in diabetic kidney disease most important point to remember is specific finding is apparent and apparent arterial hyaline accumulation specific finding is that one and the characteristic finding is diffuse glomerulosclerosis and the hallmark finding is the glomerulonephrotic membrane thickening